epic tones. They say never forget 9-11, but move on from slavery. Even if we unite, they strike fear to curtail our bravery. Rodney King, beaten to a pulp by the LAPD. Eric Garner, put in a chokehold by the NYPD. Michael Brown and Tamir Rice, taking away 2014 as teens. Protest hashtags, movements, but repeated scenes. Every July 4th, they try to celebrate independence while trying to leave black Americans independent. It's not just black America fighting for equal rights and justice. Took Stephen Lawrence's life to alter laws and not just this, because even with amendments, we are violated and abused. Diversity, CSR, out of many one, our message is misconstrued. That is it, what a powerful enter. Like that was that was amazing, isn't it? That was mad. Still. I like that one. I was, I was listening to it on the way in, on yeah. the way into the on the way into the studio. You know, mm. I can't lie to you. Still, I was Very listening to that. Very inspirational. And and like, the thing oh. is, I was I wasn't expecting it before we even intro. Yeah. I wasn't even expecting it because obviously, I know Epic. I know Epic Jones in it, and I know Epic Jones to be a producer and yeah. to be a DJ. You know, mm. promoter. Um. I wasn't expecting the whole spoken word type yeah. of thing. Like he's yeah. a full blown Very, artist now. Yeah, you know it's what I mean? Like, still. Yeah, he's a it's, it's, full blown yeah, artist, you know. And they look at they look at instrumental behind it. Yeah. And it's very powerful, you know. I like that. I felt I felt the drama. Like it, it was gripping. It made me want to listen. You know, sometimes yeah. you hear things like skip. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I was not yeah. skipping that. I was yeah. listening to it and I was pulling it up Definitely. so much so that we had to put it on the intro, you know? Definitely. So you saying Coco. Welcome people to another episode of the all time any podcast presented by myself. Taps and roses. <laughs> <laughs> the one and How only Coco Diva. Also live in the building we have. DJ Styler. Right there. So I Come don't know our vibes. special guest, guest host, guest co-host. Yeah. Just special man all in that's, all. You that's, know what I'm Epic is, is live in the building. Blessings. How are you? I am great. Yes, we like that. We like that answer. That I am great. You are great, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no joke. He is great. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I, I respect this man from mm -hmm. before, but I have a different type of respect. After I heard you see that, we all have to call him Epic Lufa King. No, I forgot him. I don't know. Like, like, yeah, I forgot him. I don't know him. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's you know your name, my bro, because I, I want to get straight into it. Mm -hmm. We ain't got no time to waste. Yeah. yeah. Your name is just epic. The name in itself. Yeah. 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 What made you pick? Because I know there's a group of you or something. Thing. And I know yeah. you got family and you, you got sound system and that beer things are going. So <laughs> tell us about the epic. Tell us about epic. Tell well, us about epic. All right. So you know, basically, it started with my brother in um, America. He's in New York, Apache. Okay. And he had a sound system in New York, uh, upstate Poughkeepsie. And first of all, it was like he came to Jamaica prior to having the sound system. He needed some dub plates. Went round to a studio called. Um, uh, this is. T -t 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 it's in Dunkirk. I'm trying to remember. It's a dub plate cutting studio. It's okay. going to come there soon. Yeah. So anyway, he went to, to cut a dub plate and Spraga Benz is there. What? And he said, <laughs> so what's the name of the song? But he didn't have a name of a song. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, where are you from? And he said, America. And they're there talking about some things. And he said, Epic, which okay. at the time, Epic had signed Shabaranks. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So then he said, yeah, but you can't use the C in a car. Yeah. Lawsuit. Yeah, so he yeah. said, Epic with a K, because we are Jamaican, you know. Mm. <laughs> so then he thought, felt, you know, the fact that people are going to say Epic, it yeah. needs to stand for something. So he right. came up with the acronym Entertaining People, Increasing Knowledge. Oh, mad. Yeah. So, like yeah. Wala, wala, wala. <laughs> Entertaining People. Don't just skim past knowledge. that. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that one again, Entertaining People increases knowledge. Mad. And you understand if you even were to flip it, Knowledge increases people entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, -na -na. -na -na. taps yeah. and roses, taps <laughs> and roses. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's 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 the whole epic thing. And we just try, you know, Styler. I know you'd understand this. You can start your journey somewhere, and yeah. you know, it takes yeah. you so many different places. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the great thing is the foundation, and we try to make sure that entertaining people increasing knowledge, no matter what we're doing, whether promotions, mm -hmm. productions, yeah. events, whatever it is, we try to stick to that mantra of making sure we entertain people, but we still have a duty to increase their knowledge. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm. Bad. Yeah. I like that. Epic. <laughs> well, that's epic. <laughs> yeah. that I, see, I see what you did with the Buja Bantan thing. I just want to say yeah. I like that still. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I bush marketing. What, yeah, I see what you done there. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just going to say, I'm gonna put it out there. But um, yeah, man, so epic. I literally told my co-host, I said to my co-host, you know what? 
Well, my co-host told me. She was like, look, we're going to get a special guest for the next show. Yeah. yeah. The last episode we did was a nice one. You, you guys go and watch it, by the way. We, we, mm-hmm. we touched on some very nice topics, you yeah. know. You're bound to learn something in that episode. But this time, um, Coco was like, let's get a special guest for the next show. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes we like to switch it up a little bit. And um, literally, I was, we, we, we had some names. We had some names yeah. out there that we were going to go for. And then I said, you know what? Epic. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I just want to commend you, by the way, in your promotion. And it was it was... It was the whole album dropping thing you drop yes. in your your album mm. and um just your journey. Obviously, I know you as a DJ in a DJ capacity. I know you as a producer. For those of you that don't know, Epic is a producer of Spice. Cool it, mm. yeah, m- m- many more as well. But that's one of yeah. the major yeah. the major tunes that you guys will be familiar with. Um, and I said, you know what? Let's 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 go for Epic Jones. And immediately Coco was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And Coco said, I'm gonna go into Google and get some bits. Yeah. And then you know what I did? And a few seconds later, I'm Easy. dropping the bio. Yeah. Because you had sent me a PDF document. Yep. Now, people, this is so important. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even need to ask. The man sent me his PDF document with mm-hmm. the bio and everything, all the information was there. I said, forget Google. Um, Coco said, just familiarize yourself with this. Mm. And that's the kind of level of professionalism that we're talking Definitely. about. Definitely. Um, when we bring you onto this show, um, obviously we you, this is some of the things that you guys should just be doing naturally. You know what I mean? Right. You guys should just have yeah. these things ready for us. If yeah. you haven't got a press kit, you haven't got, you know what I mean? Then I said, you know what? The timing is everything and the energy is connected because the day that we were recording, what the day today is the day that his album drops. Yep. You know what I mean? And Epic was like, yeah, man, perfect timing, you know, yeah. cause, and you don't need to go and get that. I'm going to let him tell you about that mm. right now. Yeah, man. What's out there? Let us know about that body of work, you know, tell us about it. Um, so now that's epic is, I mean, it's, it's been a long journey. So you mentioned cool it. These are some of these songs have been released and out there for, for quite some time. But I mean, the music industry that we are in, um, especially if you're a DJ, um, executive producer, putting out a body of work, it's, you know, you're not the one that's actually going in the, the studio to record. So it's more like you've come up with the ideology you found a combination of artists and it's it's all about the timing. So it's a lot about the journey and the creative process. You know, I've got a variety of artists on there. So, you know, Spice, you've mentioned, we've got Shatawali, who what? was a part of Beyonce's project, um, Lion King soundtrack. Yeah, already, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we have Pampute on there. We have Smooth Face from the UK. So yeah. I strategically tried to... If you look on the artwork as well, it it shows a little kid, Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, to epitomize where I started from. I started off, you know, you have the little links, you have my son, Epic Daquan. I started off as a a, a child DJ as well. I mean, I only took up DJing. Some people will say, oh, I was born and I'm around music. I took it up because when I was in high school in Jamaica, I started very young. I passed, passed to go high school young. So when all the other teenagers looked old enough, had beards, moustache, and they could get into clubs, yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. And I thought the only way to get into clubs looking this young yeah. is to play the music. Yeah. So I that, just want to say, yeah. you're still, you're still yeah. young still now, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so, yeah, yeah I, I mean, that's how, how the journey started. So I wanted it to epitomize the whole journey. And if you look at it, it's like a kid in a space shoot and it's showing technology, but at the same time, he's on decks, mm-hmm. which yeah. showing that, I still have some grasp of, you know, the foundations of where the music's coming from, despite showing yeah. all of where it's going. So, yeah. yeah, it's been one of those long journeys, Styler, in terms of bringing it all together from starting as a, a DJ to moving into production and artist management and, and, and more so of that. So that is the album really and truly is my journey of all of that and working mm-hmm. with all these artists from all over the world. Okay. No, that's epic. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's epic. Yeah. No, that, that's a, that's a story, man. Um, so you mentioned going to high school in Jamaica. Yes. Yeah, but you you was you born? In, you know, wasn't born in Jamaica, right? I, no, I was born in UK here. Yeah, so yeah. I was um, Borough of Brent, um, yeah. Norfolk big, Park Hospital. Bigger the Brent crew. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, origin. Well, what shows on 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 the birth certificate is North Wembley, but I what I knew growing up was Norfolk. And okay. it's, right. it's funny, I did an interview with Morgan Heritage. Um, this is with Peter um, and, and his brother, um, Mojo. Okay. And I did the, the interview in Norfolk. It was Shawnee B that hosted all the interviews. Okay. And the area just looked familiar because it was Norfolk, you know, that he was doing it. He had his studios there and everything. And 
it just brought back the memories because I left yeah. here age seven. Um, oh, right. Back to, yeah. young, yeah. back to Jamaica. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. funny enough, you know, you see the poem, the, the, the what we started off the album with, it, it's a big part of my journey because 1993 is when I left here at age seven. Yeah. Because my father, after the incident with Stephen Lawrence, so I can't grow my black sons yeah. here in this country. Mm-hmm. So Mad. Stephen Lawrence incident happened 1993, April. By July, yes, yeah. we were out the country. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I went that's back to Jamaica. Very, yeah, very, so wow. it's very significant in that yeah. sense. And they got father epic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice, that man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like going to Jamaica, that was eye opener because all I knew was getting carried to school being dropped off. Very sheltered life in Norfolk. Yeah. I mean, I remember going to primary school there and um, I was the only black kid there. I remember them introducing oh, wow. a Nigerian kid. I remember the name Emmanuel. So I'm thinking, yeah. How, you know, they said how, Nigerian. How old was he? How old was Emmanuel? Uh, Emmanuel was seven. seven I, so I, yeah. He, are you sure? Are you yeah. sure? <laughs> <laughs> you don't, don't, I mean, they, they, they come and the they, teacher they, said we got a new child. They're 22 years old. Yeah, yeah, they're telling yeah, that they're yeah. seven years old now, joking. Yeah, they, they, they they like, Nigerian people there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the teacher's like Emmanuel's, you know, Emmanuel's... E-man. You know, There's always an E-man, isn't it? In, from mm. Nigeria or Ghana, E-man. Yeah, and when yeah, you look on Emmanuel now, you know, we didn't use the term mixed race then. Half caste. I'm thinking, so I don't have a... Another, you know, the, another person that I can say kind of looks familiar with me. So it was, it was kind of different because growing up there, all I knew was, apart from my family, everybody else was Caucasian, Indians, yeah. and what we call the half caste and everything. So when that Stephen Lawrence thing happened, and then I go to Jamaica, and you leave from the person that you used to get teased in school in England till you go into Jamaica and they're saying, oh, talk again, let me hear. Yeah, let me hear yeah, English yeah. Accent. yeah, I was just about to ask uh, that. And, and you, know, you know, everybody wants to be your friend and it was mm. so different, but then even acclimatizing, you're talking about a kid that didn't take bus to school, didn't like, and then I have to take a bus in, you know, cause I grew up in St. Thomas mm. and you got to take a bus, you got to pay bus fare, you're yeah. in corky clothes, like uniform, <laughs> yeah. the uniform's completely different. <laughs> yeah. And then you're around a, a desk, it's like metal chair and, people's got their pencils and everything so was it a culture shock for you like it was a culture shock and Mm -hmm. then you're then there's the other parts like you get beaten in jamaica (laughs) (laughs) you know you know like england you don't even have to be the one the whole classroom gets in jamaica yeah Yeah, 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 so (laughs) the teacher leave the classroom and come back and they're talking and the whole class getting it Mm. So, I mean, the first time I got it, man, I mean, my skin out of my hand peeled. My my hand definitely wasn't used to that hot type of treatment. Mm. It it peeled. Mm. And you didn't even do anything just because somebody else made it. Yeah, 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 the whole class just has to get it because she come back and the class is noisy. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) uh, I mean, that was eye opener. But, you know, Jamaica, I I, I wouldn't change anything. The education I got in Jamaica is A1, top Mm. tier. I love the competitive nature. I mean, you went to Jamaica and learning the times table, learning like it was so mm. advanced compared to... 100. I had to actually step up my game going there. Yeah. Yeah. So what I thought yeah. I knew a lot of, um, maybe in terms of phonics and such, yeah, I may have been advanced, but in terms of math and, yeah, behind yeah. and science, yeah. it was way behind. Yeah. So I had, yeah. to, I had to catch up. And I mean, it was brilliant. You had this exercise book. I had the timetable on the back of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And times table was like songs. So, you know, musical, Jamaica's just one musical place. You're learning your time stay, but it sounds like you're singing. Singing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're learning um, capitals. It's like you're singing yeah. as well. So, uh, ju- education in Jamaica was great. The music yeah. experience there was great as well. On on, on, on the topic of education, um, how further did you take your education to where you're at now? So, um, <laughs> went to Kingston College and um, I got... My my CXCs, which is equivalent to like O levels, mm-hmm. and then I did my A levels. O levels, you're showing your age now, my yeah, boy. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, then I did my A levels, and I I actually got through to do law, um, at wow. UWE, uh, which wow. would have involved first year in Jamaica and then second and third in um Barbados. But wow. what happened was I had indefinite leave to remain in in Jamaica, being born in, here. My parents thought I had citizenship because going to school. So then when it was time for student loan to go um, UWE, they're like, well, if you're not a citizen, yeah. you can't get a loan. Mm. Yeah. And then there, there was the option now of sitting out a year or possibly doing a transfer to a next um, like introductory course so I don't have to sit out a year where I could probably 
pay for a, a lower school fee because law was one of the top tier yeah, yeah, medicine course, yeah. top tier fees. I didn't want to say, oh yeah, so I decided to come to UK, come back to to England. Wanted to go UE, got into University of East London. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said, oh, um, they saw the Kingston that the passport yeah. was issued in Kingston, so they're thinking, King, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Kingston University or you know from Kingston that part of, of, of UK, and then. They've kind of seen Jamaica High Commission and they went, oh, where did you go to school? I said, Kingston College. So they st it still hasn't rung <laughs> yeah, a bell. Yeah, yeah, it's a register. But they're it. looking at the passport picture and they can see like the uniform on the tie and it's just, it just doesn't look, yeah, you know, yeah. remember the corky clothes. Mm. Yeah. And more questions were asked and me just being naive and not knowing how the system worked in UK, they said, yeah, hey, I got my education in Jamaica, I've just come back here, I was born here. And I was like, oh, you've been out of the country too long. You're not considered what? a home-based student. You're an international student, so school fees are looking at is about here. yeah. It was looking at about awesome. fifteen grand a year. What? <laughs> so what? <laughs> this is madness. So Someone then, I yeah, I, laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to stop doing my education. Um, and I was gonna do the, the degree I was gonna do. Funny enough, it wasn't gonna be law. It was music theory and production management. And I literally got as far as about. October, November before they actually pulled the application, like pulled me out of classes. And uh, yeah, I, I went to start working. I worked at one place called Edexcel. It's now known as Pearson's. Yeah. Funny enough, it's within education realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm down marking these people's example, papers. Example, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doing online marking. So yeah, from, from there, I mean, it just, you know, it was just about music. I, I mean, I used to go to Stratford Rex and all of that on weekends. I used to go to Stratford Shopping Centre. I used to build mixes and be giving out mixes there and came across a lot of people from them times like Rocky Boss, DJ Face and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so, I mean, af after that, I had years of working before I returned to, to education. I mean, I didn't return to education until 2015 when I okay. literally stopped doing a nine to five. I left William Hill that time, yeah. returned to do my degree, um, event management. And then after I did that, I got a scholarship to do my master. So basically oh, our university got closed down. It's the first university in the UK. They did a panorama on it, um, Greenwich School of Management. Okay. Um, I mean, there's like 70, some 75 UK black professors in the UK. 40 of them were at, the, at that university. Majority oh. of the students there were black. And oh. they did a investigation that they think, you know, there's fraud activities in terms of in getting international students mm. in, whether they were actually checking their qualifications properly. Somebody must have rang up and they did a panorama investigation. It unveiled that they lost their license. And then eventually, like in the middle of doing our, our well, for some people, degrees or masters, uh, yeah, they lost their license. So then we had to find new universities while I was doing my masters on my scholarship. My epic, <laughs> epic I just saw it. It's not, it's not yeah. Epic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's so, one of them things, but I mean, but you're here now. Yeah, yeah. look, 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 look where the journey. Look yeah. where the journey's taking you too. It's it, it's a great thing because put it this way: when you sit in front of somebody, whether it's an interview or somebody looking to do business with you, and they say, "All right, tell me about your journey or yeah. why you'd be good," you got a story yeah. more mm -hmm. than a story, story mm -hmm. to say. Hey, listen. Yeah. When you give me this job or if you give me this contract, I'm somebody that's been knocked down yes, and still, so many times and yeah. still going. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I don't change the journey. Just as I said, I wouldn't change my education in Jamaica. I wouldn't change, you know, what happened when I came here. I mean, yeah. it was rough. And I mean, I've tried to help people that had to go through that. I mean, that thing about being out of the country and not being able to be a home-based student. Yeah, insane. Uh, Insane. It's, cra it's that's, crazy. Yeah, confusing <laughs> to me. Well, okay. Yeah, I never heard that before. That's mad. Mm. That yeah. is mad. Well, I mean, if you look on it as well, there's there's people that also have whatever. I mean, um, people that are whether it was funding during lockdown and all of that. Some people couldn't get it mm. yeah. because they were out of the country for for quite a long time and such. But it happens. It yeah. happens. It's not just education. It's even if you're talking about any form of government funding in terms of benefits or whatever, if you're out of the country too long, 
yeah. you don't qualify for them things as well. So I know a lot of businesses that want yeah. startup loans and such. No, actually, you're yeah. right, you know, because <laughs> I, you know, I have actually heard of it before, not in the capacity that you're talking about, yeah. but I have some friends for real, they have to keep coming back into the UK every so often. Yeah. Just, just to, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even with the NHS, yeah. I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Free, so. free, free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's spot on. So um, did those, those um from going to Jamaica and having that, like growing up there and stuff, did that inspire this album? Yes, because I mean, all right, innovation wise, I look on look on it. When I started playing music, I, I started from using a computer. Mm -hmm. I mean, what happened, I was doing a, a party. We used to do a reunion party all the time mm -hmm. for kids that went to my primary school because I left from St. Thomas to go to Kingston, which is probably about our journey. You used time. to do that journey? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> what happened was some of the kids chose to stay in the rural area mm -hmm. and go to high school that we went primary school with and some yeah. went to schools in Kingston. So we didn't see each other that much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we had a reunion party and uh, we used to do a, do one every year. And I was, you know, we used to play the music and there was one year, <laughs> played Tony Mataran. He was known as like mentally ill. Yeah, man. <laughs> and he was swearing on it. And my father heard it. I said, lock off that no. <laughs> 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 it was crazy. So he he kind of tried to mess up the party and like he was playing Irie FM and they were playing like old school music, music we didn't want to hear. So it kind of like killed the vibe mm. and everyone was laughing and it's my yard. So I felt some type of way. And then the following year we were doing the party, I had some CDs and what ha happened, I had loads of music on my computer, but then the CDs ran out that I burnt. Mm. But then I was thinking there must be a way I can hook up this computer to, so I, I found a way and there was a thing, a program called Winamp at the time. Yeah, so Winamp, I opened yeah. up like multiple Winamps and then I was just fading the volume and turning up the volume on the next one. Mad. And just doing the mixing thing. And then, yeah, I, I literally ran that party. For, that was the first time I used it. And then from doing that, like other people were there like, yeah, I want to book you for my party, my mad. birthday party mm -hmm. and such. And I started mad, using mad, computers mad. when most of the sounds and DJs were still using records oh, at that yeah. time. So. Yeah. I played on sounds like Lee's Unlimited at um in Grand Market in Jamaica, which is like one big little thing. Uh, well, big thing for all those that are doing looking to do their last minute shopping before Christmas yeah, and yeah, such. Yeah. And yeah, so from that, you know, innovation of using computer and everything, I was featured on Winford Williams had a, had mm -hmm. a thing, not on stage, you know, on stage was there, but a thing called the party. Okay. which okay. they used to video it in Asylum, which is now known as Triple Century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it used to be about dancing. And then they interviewed a DJ that was a, the guest DJ there. And, you know, I was featured there as the first computer com computerized sound on oh, um, okay. on the program. And oh, okay. that aired on the same day when Usain Bolt broke the World Junior Records. Mm -hmm. okay. So Champs was going on that Saturday yeah, when yeah, they yeah. aired it. And it came on right during the intermission when... You know, they take a break from Champs. So quite a lot of people saw it. So by the Monday after Champs, people were like, yeah, I saw you on TV, man. Mm, yeah, Didn't yeah. know you are a DJ. I thought you were a cricketer. Mm. So, <laughs> cricketer? Yeah, man. so I'll I, I go into that. Yeah, I know a, you're a into bit. cricket as well. Yeah, 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 so I mean, you know, you know, prior to the music, I was doing the, the, the cricket. So I yeah. played cricket for my school. I was still have the record for the youngest professional cricketer in Jamaica because um, the feeder system for the Jamaica senior team was it's called senior cup cricket and I was playing for Kensington Cricket Club which is in Rollington town area oh, okay. um I had teammates like Wavell Hines who played for West Indies David yeah. Bernard Jr played for West Indies um Robert Haynes who was the coach of Jamaica um we had Laurie Williams the late Lor Laurie Williams as well Darren yeah. Powell who's now a politician in Jamaica he played for West Indies as well so Mad. I was 12 years old when I was in that Such team and I made it into Jamaica and West Indies youth team which we won the under 15 world cup in 2001 in oh, England nice. here big, Lords big, final big, against big. Pakistan so yeah was doing that but music was always there the love yeah, yeah the mm. the love for music was always there and I mean you look at sports as well I mean everything people will say there's politics in it as well you can be very good <laughs> yeah. but if you're from certain areas you don't have that support or backing yeah, yeah you'll yeah. only get thus far and yeah. i just thought that music was one of them ones where hey listen they ain't no cricket board they ain't no um or you come from this area whatever yeah. if you're good at music you're just good at music yeah, and yeah. i said that was the, the route i was gonna go so the, 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 there's you're right in what i want to say two things you're right in what you're saying yeah 
I want to take it back. You said if you're good at music, you're good at music. Yeah, yeah. yeah there ain't no cricket ball. They ain't say that. But guess what? There is. There's bad mind. I didn't and know that. Yeah, I didn't of, know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. the time, I didn't yeah, know that. Have, but we're gonna talk about that <laughs> yeah. because I have a special guest later. I'm gonna actually bring him in onto the seat while you're here yeah. because it's gonna be interesting to get the artist perspective, the producer and yeah. DJ perspective. You know, what yeah. I mean, we're gonna have some conversations that people are kind of uncomfortable with. But this is the out of many show. We, we talk about them things over here. You know what I mean? Right. True. And I want to bring you back to where you said. You used to you was playing Tony Matter on the under on the, on the, on the or you was playing you was playing and your father said to <laughs> yeah. you turn off that yeah well what's funny is you've definitely been through it right yeah and number two on your album is called Been Through It and with it's Mataron. with Tony Matter on so <laughs> what's your father saying now about yeah yeah it? Am I telling him Tony off? Uh, I mean you know what the crazy thing is you know a lot of the times our parents hold us back from doing certain things and then it's way later in life we find I out realize. so I, I I mean I only came to find out now that I have the sound system in Jamaica, um, that my father, his, you know, his father, which is my grandfather, um, used to have a sound. But it wasn't yeah. no big, big sound, but you yeah. know, them the little, yeah. little system. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, because he grew up around it as a little kid, but then, you know how, how it was then, don't touch that, that whatever. Yeah. Yeah. His experience yeah, so. of it was, he wanted to be around it, but he didn't get the chance to yeah. be around yeah. it. So then his little fear of, what are you going getting into that? Because he, he he thought he didn't get his father anywhere. You understand doing <laughs> that. So he's thinking, what are you doing with music? Yeah. You know, I even when I was writing I poetry, he was like, nobody gets rich off poetry. So it's like to me, it was I don't know. I, I think I always wanted my father's validation in certain things. He used to play cricket, is why I, I wanted to play cricket. He used to ball spin. I wanted to ball spin. Yeah. Um <laughs> I used to play some games and, and literally get mad at a match and when it's my time to bat, my father would watch me ball and then it's time to bat and he'd come and then I look, I don't see the car, he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he'd come back and say, how did the game go? And I used to think, oh my, everybody else's parent has stayed there. But mm -hmm. I understood, he had a restaurant running, he had other kids, there was my little yeah. brother, there's my sister that was going to, to high school there as well mm -hmm. and, and thing and I just thought, okay. Cricket's not, you know, I can't get his attention all the time through cricket and he can't come. It's, you know, cricket's a whole day game, yeah. you know, sometimes two days, three days. So I understood he can't take a whole day. Yeah. So there was music and everything. Music, man, still not pleased. We're <laughs> doing this reggae music and dance hall. And, yeah. and you got to think about at the time when I was looking to play music in, you know, it was late 90s and such. You had like Mr. Vegas, you had the Bounty Killers, the Beanie Mans and whatever for yeah. him. Where he's growing up on like Gregory Isaacs or whatever, there's a big yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. in the type yeah. of topics and whatever. So yeah. then, yeah, there, there, there was there was that, and he's just thinking, you're going to a good school, and why do you want to play, you know, that music like the yeah, personnel that are singing yeah. that music? They it does it just doesn't fit yeah, for yeah. him. So. Mataran mix me, you know, that Mataran <laughs> thing being played was a no no, more, more so because of the swearing, not because of the music that was yeah, being played. Yeah, yeah. But he's looked on it since and he's, you know, he's very, very proud. Like, if you go to anybody and uh, anybody goes to his restaurant, he's like, yeah, 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 my son's a DJ, he plays on radio in yeah, UK. And, yeah. you know, he's got his sound and everybody now, because he's well known. He mm. tells everybody about the sound system. Yo, listen, this is a 60,000 watt yeah. power <laughs> sound, you know. Big, yeah, yeah, so sounds he, about he loves right, it, my bro. Yeah, 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 so he's, he's proud. But sometimes I know what it is. It's, it's the fair factor they have of the unknown. Mm. Yeah. But when they see that you figure it out, you know, it's not that they didn't want it for you, but sometimes it's the fair factor of what they experience. Yeah. Um. So he's looked on it now. And I mean, all them people he thought I shouldn't, you know, be working with. He's now yeah. looking on them and they're very popular. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, so. they, yeah, we love that. And I can relate to it because I was raised with my grandmother and my grandmother, she's like from the era before your father. So she's yeah. from the Scar and Rocksteady mm. era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and you know, a man like Ken Booth and those kind of, you know, and Jump, Delroy yeah. Wilson and Toots yeah. and the Maitland. Yeah. So she's from that era, right? So, I grew up listening to those kind of songs there. So I have the best of both worlds. But then when I'm when on a Sunday morning and she's lick, I'm running out because she's not, she don't mess with, you know, you know people like um uh, Sam Cooke and yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. She, she, like, even Kenny Rogers and the country thing. And yeah, yeah. you know, so when that's playing on a Sunday now and I'm hearing that, I'm taking it in. I'm like, oh, I'm taking it in though. You know, I'm like, oh gosh. So when I'm ready to play my song them now, and then I used to just hear, but Jesus Christ by my dying soul. I'm like, what happened now? Like, what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> 
wait, you mustn't take your money by them type of song. I think, it was, I think it first of all, I ain't spent no money. It's Limewell. Because them days used to dance. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. On my so, lunch break. First yeah. of all, I ain't take no money. But she, it used to grieve her and vex her that I would, just because of the lyrics, yeah, mm. that I would take my money and buy them type of music. So I know what you're saying. But then now, so then, Obviously, I went to a good school. I went to I had my education, whatever, whatever. And there was a couple of people in my family that weren't too sure about the DJ thing and rare, rare, rare. And I'm, I'm, I'm professional DJ in every sense. This is my full time <laughs> job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now everywhere they go, yeah, they, everyone's showing off. They're proud. They're this, they're yeah. that. But my grandmother did support me. But it's like she was on edge. She weren't sure in it. Cause remember, I've got my my, my education. I've got other things I could yeah. do. Them days I was mm. doing football as well. There was better yeah. things I could have went into, and I just wouldn't put down this music thing. You understand? Yeah. So I understand what you're saying, but. My grandmother's been fully supportive. That's one thing she's been yeah. fully supportive mm -hmm. and she's so proud of me like in everything that I'm doing right now, you know, so big up grand grand, but I fully can relate to you. But because this is out of mini show and we talk about culture yes. and stuff, I do want to mention something while we're on this topic. Mm -hmm. And Coco, I want to ask you this question. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Have you noticed a cultural difference where between Caribbeans, Caribbeans and Africans whereby it comes to education and whatever, whatever. Because I noticed when I was in university, my African friends, and big up all my African friends, them, they were under immense pressure. They mm -hmm. couldn't tell their father that they was going to be a yeah. DJ or be, they had yeah. to be doctors, doctors and lawyers. And, lawyers so stuff, yeah. I don't, is it, is yeah. it a culture thing or is it, like, am I making it up? Or like, no. cause that's what I've noticed. It's, it's definitely a culture thing, I feel like. And going back to what you were saying earlier, I think it's because, you know, sometimes our, our parents, they can see my, my guy used to say, can I sit you a 10 inch block? Yeah. So for her, the, the next five years is so unknown that she's scared herself. Yeah. So she don't really want you to do something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She just don't know the outcome, but I do definitely think it's a culture thing. Yeah. 100%. What, what 100%. Do you think, think? Well, I think sometimes we have to, you see, the thing is, if somebody's made a walk already and you're following in that path, you only can go as far as that person's right. going. Yeah. But, Mm. If you're gonna go somewhere that's never been travelled before, yeah, it you know there's gonna be questions, there's gonna be challenges, but you're most likely gonna end up doing things and finding places that nobody knew you could find. And sometimes I think the challenges that parents have is that we're taking a path that's never been taken exactly, before, yeah. so they don't have a blueprint of knowing yeah. what might What's be our next? outcome. Yeah. So it's only till we get somewhere on the journey and they say, oh. That's Them what you're doing. Right, yeah. Have yeah. you ever watched a video of like an artist and they start doing something and you don't mm. know what you don't they're know drawing? Where they're going. Yeah, yeah. And then later on, you look at it and it looks, wow, the picture's coming together. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly how I see it. Until your picture actually looks like a picture. Yeah. <laughs> there's mm. question that's, marks and mm. doubts. That's a brilliant um, reply, Epic, and I agree with you. I'm still going to need an answer. Do you think that <laughs> the Caribbeans? Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want to, I still want to, we're no, not no, no, swerving I think, that question. I think got, no, no, I think it is a thing. Where they just <laughs> they got a problem. <laughs> the man, the man they got no, no, no. They got they, they literally got a problem in terms of, and it is a thing where many of them just think the traditional jobs. If you're not a doctor, yeah, lawyer, and for some it's that's finances what I'm getting as well. That's what I'm getting at. I've accountant, that. yeah. You know, there's certain jobs that they look at as as prestigious and mm -hmm. even I mean even a banker. The thing is, that's what they know. Yeah. If you know, if they go into a bank, they expect to see somebody, a man in a suit or a woman in a uniform and looks proper. If they go in go to a doctor's office, they're expecting to see the doctor well attired. Mm. And now how you look in Jamaica, you might go in a bank and a man's got cane rolls. Yeah. Mm. You wouldn't see that when mm. I was growing up or, or, or as a child. Yeah. And now you might go to your doctor's office and Doctors in sweats, yeah. dressed down and, and, and such, <laughs> or he's in jeans pants and, yeah. and just a little polo shirt. So things things are changing, but their perception is that you need to, to be in a suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need yeah. to go to school. You need to get this education. And even if, and I mean, we see it many times, the same way you're talking. Even if you were playing sports, it was like, you better do your schoolwork. Yeah, mm. it's frowned upon They you. didn't care. And, and I mean, I went to school with a few people, Marlon Samuels. You know, Toto, we used to call him Toto. Yeah. This man was being taken out of school to play for Jamaica. He was like 15 or 16 when he was playing for Jamaica's senior mm. team. Okay. Uh, I think he was about 17 when he made his debut for West Indies. In the first tour was like in Australia. Yeah. So he was taken out of school again. Mm. That man, there, I'm going to, no disrespect, but he didn't care about school like that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, always yeah. had it in his head 
I'm going to play for West Indies. Yeah, mm. yeah. And there may have been doubts because, I mean, when he made his debut, there was a little time when he was out of the team for a good while and you're mm. thinking, if you get an injury, you know, because yeah. we, we know how your school was and everything, yeah, what's your backup? But, yeah. I mean, he, if you're that good and I believe if you support and you believe in your your, your talent and your, and your skill set, then you either stick through with it. But as I said, the Caribbean parents, African parents, they just think... You have to get your education. And I just believe that even if they think you've got the talent, they're thinking, yeah, the worst. They're always thinking the worst. If you get injured, yeah. if this don't happen, yeah, if you don't yeah, get yeah. through. So they're <laughs> yeah. always thinking you need to get the education. But to me, there's always a journey. You don't have to get the education right after high school or whatever and go to college and you can uni. come anytime. You can come. Yeah. Can come yeah. I mean, look mm -hmm. at my journey. I didn't go back to, to university until I was an adult, like yeah. after 30. So... It can come anytime, really and truly. It doesn't matter when you get there, yeah. as long as you get there. You get there, yeah, man. Epic. So, <laughs> all right, that's yeah. So now you finally give me give me an answer. Yeah, yeah. So, man, like when people swear of question. Like, <laughs> no like, problem. Because you're not a politician. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I like that. So um, just coming back up to the time now. So that's a very interesting journey, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So I even I learned some stuff that I didn't even know about you. Um. So coming back more up to the times, you have your album, mm -hmm. um, epic. Jones, I like yeah. it. I was listening to it on the way into the studio. I was listening to your album and I was listening to um, Jester's EP, whoever, yeah. whoever UK based um, dancehall artist over here in the UK. Jester, you're going to get to see him very shortly. No problem. Um, but yeah, I was listening to his EP and I was listening to your album and <laughs> it was funny because I went I went to Jester's album first. Yeah. To EP, EP first, sorry. And I was listening to it and um, as I was listening to it, I, was, I put it through the van and everything and I said, just, just, I feel like I, I need to go to the gym. Like it's very, it's <laughs> energetic, very energetic yeah. and, yeah, it gives you, that you know, vibe, yeah, like yeah. I, I wouldn't like, I felt, yeah, I'm ready yeah. to go. Like I was, you get me like, so I was like, all right, I like, this is, this is my vibe. I got to, um, the fifth, the fifth, um, file that was in my email and, um, it was, it was a song called Swell Up. Yeah. yeah. And I heard him perform this song, um, with DJ AG, which is like a TikTok mm -hmm. trending DJ yeah, yeah. that's out there right now. Big up DJ AG. Um, and I heard him perform it on there, on that, on that little that set one, thing. Yeah. And when I heard it, I remember thinking to myself, can this song get any better? Because the way how he performed it, it sounded like the performance would probably be better than the actual song. Yeah. yeah? And, I, and then I heard the the, the 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 actual MP3 file of the song and you can't even tell the difference. Like literally the energy, mm. I'm going to make you yeah. hear it still. The cool, energy yeah. is crazy. Mm. And I was thinking to myself, there's loads of UK dance artists out there right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And, some of their songs, they I, I get music all the time. I never really get a chance to check it out. Coco, don't start, <laughs> don't start. She's ready, you know. Don't start. Yeah, I never really get a chance to um check out a lot of emails because I'm doing so many other things. Admittedly to myself, mm -hmm. I've I've kind of stepped more away from the dance or DJing scene, mm -hmm. and I'm more doing behind the scenes work. I'm doing visas, I'm doing permits, I'm doing the business side yep. of things. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to DJing, I'm more time. I'm in a corporate booking, or you know, it's yeah. not dancer, mm -hmm. so I don't really get a chance to be on it like I was before. However. However, that caught my eye and when I saw his energy and then I heard the song what what stuck to me was I realized the songs them that I'm receiving and that I'm listening to there's nothing that grabs my attention there's nothing that's catchy there's no melody and this all I remember is it's got a melody that was just going yep. through my head my bro catchy, yeah. you know what I mean yeah yeah, yeah no, it's just repetitive and I was like I just want to say to the artists out there, you don't always have to come with a bag of lyric, lyric, lyrical, 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 lyrical. You don't always have to come with that because I can't, I'll get bored, I'll switch off. I can't keep, I don't know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, no word. I watched the Vibes Cast interview recently the other day and he was talking about fever. And he was saying that he was watching a program while he was in jail girls, where he got, girls. huh? Someone of a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was watching a program and he got the XOXO. That's where he took it yeah. from. Mm. XOXO. And then he just slowed it down. XOXO, my love is... And he, and he said it's English so people can understand it, people can relate to it, people can sing to it. Especially when you do dance on and you got patwa. People need to know what you're saying. We need mm -hmm. to understand you. And it's so funny because I play in a bar in Bromley every week. I have a residency there called O'Neill's Bar. And the demographics in there is Caucasians, straight up. You have about two black people, but... They're like Caucasians anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They no, they they really are keeping it real. Yeah? yeah, keeping it real. They're not cultured. Yeah, they're more into the Caucasian side, yeah. right? 
the, the, black, the black people that are in there. Yeah. How I know this? Because when they're coming up to me, the type of music that they're asking me for, they're asking me, oh, can you play Sweet Caroline? And so I know, I know mm -hmm. the demographics, <laughs> yeah? So, so, I, when I, so I, I have to play, <laughs> yeah, I've got to play that for them. And you know, I've got to play those. And, and don't get me wrong, I love those songs. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a pop fan through and through. When I was yeah. young, I, I say this unapologetically. I used to listen to Backstreet Boys, all of that. I wanted that way. That's a banger. Millennium album. West, mm. like, yep. like, they're bangers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. can't play with me. Are you yeah. mad? So um, it's something Bewitch, Celavi, say yeah. you will, oh, say yeah. you stop won't. It, stop, yeah. stop it! Stop it! Yeah. Stop it! I used to listen to all that. <laughs> all right, there you yeah. go. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't get twisted. Yeah. Don't, don't get me started on steps. Are you mad? Five, six, seven, eight. Are you mad? So, Red chili peppers. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, there you go. Even there's one song. <laughs> yeah. like, um, there's one rock song that I living on a prayer. Bon Jovi. Yep. Mm, bon Jovi. Banger. Yep. Banger. Yep. Anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> so I play all of that, yeah. But then I drop, yeah. I dropped. I said, let me test this crowd. And I dropped Vibes Cartel, Fever. Everyone's singing word for word. Yeah, loud. Yeah. Like, All right, cool. Let me drop Charlie Black's Party, Party Animal. Animal. Everyone's singing word for word. So I'm mm. like, all right, I got them now. I know where to go. Yeah. So I've dropped the Kevin Little Turn Me On. Everyone's singing word for mm -hmm. word. So I didn't know games, Egyptian, or you know how it yeah. goes, yeah? Mm. Then Karaoke. I said, let me try something <laughs> else now. Yeah, the man saying my world boss. Let me try something else. I dropped the Vibes Cartel, Gaza Slim, one man. Can I tell you? Every person introducing Vanessa Bling as literally every person in that too, room. You know? I swear to yeah. God, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. As, bro, I swear, even the man them are singing the what, and I'm like, they don't know. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. You see, they yeah, yeah, posted yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> and but but I say that to say this, I'm showing you something. Cartel is a genius because you see what he did there. That's dancehall music. That's mm -hmm. not watered down dancehall. That's yes. dancehall music, but it's the way how he delivered. It's, it's how modern day dancehall, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And 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 so that's that's some of the tricks that some of these artists are missing, my bro. I feel like just go back to basics. Like go, you don't have to always be so mm. intricate, and you know what I mean. Just go back to basics, and that's why I wanted to say that because these songs you can play these songs anywhere yeah, at I was any just time. About to say that his and, music, his music I mean, is very. I don't hear massacre learned that. You know, eventually. Big time. I mean, yeah. you can find a, <laughs> yeah. there's a collab with Massacre and Kabaka Pyramid going toe to toe. I think Equinox produced it. Yeah. Okay. Kabaka. Yeah, I need like, to hear that. I mean, listen, this man can DJ like any of the other DJs, you see? Yeah. Mm. Kabaka. Listen Kabaka to is him. bad still. Yeah. You listen yeah. to that song that he did with Massacre. Look I'm for it. I'm going to go listen to it. Yeah. Mm. Listen, toe to toe. It's, it's similar to the Vibes Cartel Idonia Portmore Alliance right. song. Okay. In terms of the delivery. I'm going to go listen to that. Thank yeah? you very much. Yeah. Mm. But that was how Massacre was DJing right through them yeah. times. And then he learned slow it down. He made melody. a jazz song, didn't he? Because yeah. every yeah. song yeah. Massacre had. It was all in right, that time, but it wasn't all right. It was literally yeah. three, four songs in one song, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of how fast he was, it was spitting. Mad. He was how too many fast. double bars. Yeah. And yeah. Idonia the same. Yeah. And if you realize, I don't know, even slowed it down to, and it became when you think about the songs that I don't know has now that are being sampled, like Jackie and mm. all of that, it's slowed down. Yeah. And, and he slowed it down and he started going in melody and singing, and yeah. those became, you know, even when he did the proper uko. Yeah. 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 Man, yeah. and, and, he, and he went for the girl because yeah. there was a time when I don't <laughs> said he's not making no he girl song. Some, he said yeah. he was a war artist. Yeah, he man. wasn't making no. And the massacre to say he made a girl song. He made a song called Heaven back then. Yep. Yeah. And 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 from then it's like you have to people don't leave out the girl and you have to go for the girl limb. Yeah. He made and he slowed it down. You're totally right. Um. With that being said, I feel like very soon it's probably time to introduce our artist because yep. I want to I want to I want to hear from him. Yeah. Um. But I just wanna talk about the album that you've just dropped, the body of work. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's a nice body of work. Obviously, as I said before, you guys will be familiar with Spice Call It. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have the executive How did that um, collaboration, um, yeah. that formation come about, actually? So Spice, basically, my my partner and Spice go back for years. So when Spice, and I think Spice, uh, uh, recent, she did a recent album launch. Um, mm -hmm. She spoke of this story as well, and she's done it on Red Bull platform. So when she started off in Jamaica doing performing arts, my partner was already in performing arts, Edna Manley uh, performing arts. So there was overly expressions and the next person that was like head of the, the, the recruitment there. And she introduced Spice to Orville and was like, okay, you need to come and do a a audition here there's some people that are in performing arts because she knew spice back then and you know she could sing i mean yeah. like sing sing she wasn't like doing djing there yeah, yeah and she could dance and she did audition there and 
she got to to do the performing arts and they were friends from back then. Whatever happened is, you know how it go. Normally when you come into foreign, you don't tell nobody. So mm. she come a foreign and she didn't know. And I used to be on radio on Flames and, you know, interviewing, like interviewing people and some, I was running out of people to interview. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, I had Spice on Facebook and used to talk to her, play her songs, send videos. And my partner was like, oh, I know Spice, you know. Just like that. <laughs> Just like, like that. It, Just like Just, that. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I gone. Yeah, um, I want to interview you and thing. And my partner said, she knows you and whatever. And she said, what's your partner's name? And I gave the name. And she said, what's her surname? Gave the name. And then she said, what's your number? <laughs> yeah. So I feel, gave her I the number. Still... And she called. Yeah. And, and all me is, hey, don't you get out of here? say, you come up for it. Yeah, man, I said, I saw some yeah. still, like, 100 believe that. Yeah. <laughs> she said, hey, we, oh, you're so wicked. Yeah. She said, I never know, say that. And, and, and I was like, wait, but they know each and yeah. how I know it was, but I think it was Danger that did a show in Zanzibar with Spice and thing. And by that time... What um, Danger? Danger Pro. Danger Pro, yeah. Yeah, so basically what happened now, I, I did, you know, from that, did a song with Spice. I went to Jamaica and gave her a rhythm and she said, yeah, mommy, I give you a nice hit song. Maka Diamond did a diss record <laughs> for Spice. Mm -hmm. And she called me back and said, you know, say... I forgot to delete the hit song I gave you because I have to answer my cup and your rhythm. And, and was your donkey. rhythm. That let was out a donkey, the donkey era. That was a donkey era. Yeah, <laughs> let yeah, out the donkey. Know, yeah, yeah, we know, yeah, let out the donkey. Right so, we know how that song did. She, she linked me and said, yo, link me up by my store. And she had a store, a closed store up by Tropical Plaza at the yeah. time. Went up there. Then she said, we have a studio. We went to a studio in Bre um some studio. And we went there and Madcrap was there. But there was other people there. I just said, no, can't record here. Because remember, you're doing a disc record. Yeah, you don't you want to get yeah, out there yeah. and the enemy hear about it. Yeah, and yeah. say quick. So yeah. we end up running a Rattigan studio. Brayton. Mad Cabra. That's where she's from. That's where she's yeah. from. Mm -hmm. And we start record the song and, and thing. And have the rhythm. man. she said, yo, listen, find me some donkey song on the way for, for YouTube. <laughs> I will go on YouTube, rip it, find it, put it in that rhythm. And she start DJ. From the moment you start DJ, Leng already know because everybody heard the Maka record. It start playing the street, it start playing on radio. Mm -hmm. Leng reach around there, DJ Frost, Marcus, Ayakteen. Like, peer people reach the studio because they hear say, yo, Spice Hans and Cabra Dede and Cabra Dede. I say, yo, listen, I love war no more. Yo, you have to go for your heart. <laughs> man, yo, make sure you call some name Elsa, and this. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time we put it out, she just slip on her phone and say, all right, we need to blast this out. Boom. YouTube, yeah. boop, boop. Yeah. When I look, these, this is Blackberry time. Mm. Phone popping off. Yeah. Because mm. she's put Spice Let Out the Donkey, produced by DJ Jones, and it's gone on YouTube, it's gone on this, Gaza Prince, gone on Akam, gone on. Cause that, yeah. those are the days of the YouTube influencers yeah, that yeah, put all yeah. the music. Yeah. Then I have DJ Sunshine calling, bear people, like, listen, you need to make a radio edit so we can play this on radio now. So we have to record the radio version as well. I'm very sure, uh, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm very sure from that day and the same day, by the time it went out, Sting was already sealed. Because this happened in December. Mm. I yeah. didn't stay long enough for actual Sting, to be honest. Mad. But what? I saw, You're no, mad. I had to come back. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and then um, I literally saw the donkey come out Yo, and that stage and everything. That yeah. thing was epic. Maka didn't come out. She didn't no, come out. She no, didn't, no, she no, didn't no, come no, out. But no. it was like the yeah, no. it was the thing. Maka yeah. did come out. Yeah. She, the, the donkey was there. What do yeah. you mean Maka never come <laughs> out? No, 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 no. Only stop it. No. I draw, stop. Maka, no, no, no. Maka, no, no. Maka, sorry. What's sorry? It was, it was it was like the thing, but I mean it was crazy because at the time, Frost was like, yo, youth, you can be the baddest thing ever forward out of England. Mm. I said, how? The man said, yo. Give me the rhythm, make me give Maka. I can get Mother the voice for it. <laughs> and when Mother do does a song for Cartel, Cartel go voice. Yeah. I saw him go on and Marcus, I say, yo, you that that. And me, I say, yo, I can't do that enough because I know Spice stay. And Spice stay in the, 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 the next room. She depends on the car, I don't know who she talked to. And she does like she over here. Mm. And she say, you see if you ever give nobody my rhythm, <laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I was yeah. like, yo, love it. Maka yeah. for find her own rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was, you know, so, so, so I did that. And she followed to England and she did the show for Danger and um, did that tour and thing. And when she buck up on my partner as well, one big crying and thing. And then I was like, all right, we need to do some more work. Never get to do no music work. 
was doing her tour DJ duties and thing. Then uh, from about 2016, I had that cool it rhythm. Playing it on flames like nothing. Yeah. Then I link up Genesis, funny, funny enough, and Genesis used to love to do some remixes. He chucked some, you know, a cappellas on it, conscience broke off your back. Some other little thing, King of the Dancehall, and I'm playing it on radio. And I get a contact and somebody say, yo, um, listen, some people want to work with you, you know, Shatawali, whatever. And this lady called Kim's Media also, at the time, she was doing PR work for Sean Storm. And she was doing PR work for, for Shata Wally. And Shata Vice, Dancehall Girl on the Rhythm. And I'm there with Dancehall Girl. I'm there with Cyclone's Make It Clap um, song recorded on there. And those are the songs that recorded. And Spice had the Rhythm from 2016. Yeah, man, I'm soon Vice. And for about two years I get in. Yeah, man, I'm soon Vice, yo. <laughs> Until I was like, I don't know if you remember when Indicator came out. She did Indicator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did Welcome to Jamrock. And a yeah, white woman came box. up on stage and was dancing. And it got posted on Shade Room. And <laughs> Spice in the comments said, At Sparky, I want you to talk to Epic Jones. Because tell him, say, you wait two years to this song and look where it reads, Shade Room. And obviously because she's tagged my name in that comment and the videos about mm. her. There was about 2,000 replies. Yeah. About 800 mentions. At Epic Jones, just go and wait. Youth, Mad. be patient, youth. Nobody that know me, you know, but they yeah. just see that she mm. tag and say, yo, yeah. Epic Jones feel like me now go vice him and me I tell him, say, me have to wait. Yeah. And then she just seen her one ice hotel in Sweden and she had the under fire song and say, yo, my vice a song for you. So, you know, me say under fire, me have the answer. Cool it, after, yeah, we, makes after sense. the fire, we have to cool it down. Mad. So, Mad. I mean, it, it's the same thing on the journey, as I tell you. Let out the donkey was from about 2012 before some like it. Yeah. And then, I mean, from 2012 to 2018, I had to wait for Cool It. I mean, yeah. it, it, but it was worth the wait. So, so question, question. In 2014, I bought Spice to the UK, yeah? Yeah. Um, when I bought it to the UK, that was one of the first times I came across you properly. Yeah. DJing, because you were DJing for her. Yeah. Um, okay. At the not my leg, it was a different leg. I think yep. North East, North East, yep. North East London. I saw you there, and that was a time when um, because <laughs> you know, Spice, you don't mix her words. Yeah, something did happen. Something, something happened, and and I ended up getting sick just before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she shouted me out and whatever, whatever. And then she said, she said something. To you. She turned to her and she said, "Epic, don't ramp with me." And what, what, yep. what did you do? What did you did you mess up her song? Cause you know she she don't ramp to call you out. What happened there, my no, Listen, mm. yeah. you have to understand. I don't know if you've been seeing some clips of Nicki Minaj coming like she calling out a DJ and thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's just. Props. It's just like Killer when he said, "You don't mix me bad. Yeah. Me kick you." Yeah. And you're not. He's not being mixed bad. Yeah, yeah. But it's part of the show. Part of the, yeah, part yeah, of the yeah, performance. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna allow so, you. I'm gonna allow yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, thought you I thought you done something here. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. But the, yeah, at times as well, you just have to understand that that's just part of it. And sometimes you're there and you're thinking, "Ah, oh, you do something until you realize it happened five, six times." You say, Shit. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. part of the performance yeah, Can't and take a personal, and, then, yeah. and then by the time you reach dressing room, you said, yo, listen, you have to take one for the team, you know. Yeah, Crowd yeah, yeah. get restless yeah. and just <laughs> flick. Yeah, my man. Yeah, that, yeah, so it it, it, it it happens. I mean, people do it with but there's sometimes when you actually yeah. have done something. You either play the wrong track or yeah. whatever. So I, I've been in situations like that. Not with her too many times, but but with other artists and things. But yeah, I mean, you, you got to understand before Spice was being reveled in the in the role of Queen of Dancehall. She took on the moniker of, of Queen of the Stage. She puts strong emphasis on her performances. So you can't mess that up. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. If nah, you're a part of that, it whether you're a dancer, yeah. whether you're the DJ, whatever it is, whether you're the MC introducing her, you have to make sure you're on point. So yeah. In, in in that sense, still you can't mess up with her. <laughs> yeah, especially Spice because she don't mince her words. That she's very outspoken, and I I relate to you when you said about what she said to your partner because yeah. I saw her in Uptown Mondays like a year or something after, and I bought her here, and she literally came up to me in the middle of Uptown Mondays. She said, "Styler, what you do ya? Oh, you never tell me say that." I'm like, oh, "Oh, sorry, like I'm not gonna call you and be like Spice. I'm in Jamaica, you know what I'm saying?" Yeah. So, but she's very much down to earth. She's that kind yeah, of yeah, down yeah, to yeah. earth person. That type of person. Yeah, she's cool, and I know she used yeah. to eat, she used to even live in um. In North London, oh, even yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know man. Auntie very, very well. Yes. Yeah, Auntie, uh, Auntie Devon. 
Yeah, it's like so family, trust me. So big up, big up, big up, Spice. We're proud of the movement, you know, from them Very time proud. there, from them time there, mm-hmm. um, 2014, when I could afford her to bring her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I could afford her now, so now she's doing big yeah, things. Yeah, mirror you know? 25, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 25 her album years. Project is... 25 yeah. years in yeah. the business. Yep. Jesus Christ, man. How long have you been in, in the business? Well, obviously, Good I question. started playing music from high school, so. Yeah, I've, been, I've literally, you can literally call it close to 30 years now. Matter, yeah. yeah. You don't even look like you're 30 years old, bro. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why? Wow. So, um, yeah, all right. So that's that's very nice. What we're going to do now, Um, Just I feel like, yeah, I want to take a quick break. And yeah. uh, we're going to bring in our, our next guest. Oops. Um, um, yeah, do you know what Coco, Coco's in this mood, you know? Do you know Coco's in this mood? I sent her, I sent her the EP, yeah? <laughs> and it's like, she, it's like she just had this mad energy from nowhere. You know, she's usually quite laid back. Yeah. But do you know what? I feel like we need to introduce a new segment to this podcast. Yeah, um, and I feel like I'm going with the name Out of Many Jamming Sessions. Right, yeah? You song. good with that? Yeah. So we're going to introduce a new session and I'm hoping we're going to have time. Yeah. And you're gonna, we're going to have the first ever artist featured on the jamming session. Jamming session. I'm That's praying it. It's gonna happen, and if don't worry, because if it don't happen today, we're gonna make sure it happens. Christmas you know what I mean? Special. And I want, I want, he, he, has, to, he has to, you know. Yeah. I feel like he's got yeah. a, a fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get Jester in the hot seat. Um, we're gonna put some questions to them. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put some very, yeah, I'm gonna put some questions to yeah. them to the, to the producer and the D. But we're gonna talk to Epic as a DJ, yeah. as a DJ. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I'm ready, I want you to put on the, the producer hat. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna but bring before, on Jester before before we go on to Jester. Go on, Coco. He said. You can advise me to. Come here, I to someone. Okay, so my ease for boss. <laughs> right, we can't, we can't, we can't talk about that yeah, off man. here. You have, yeah. to, you have to speak with management, and we can't speak about that yeah, off man. here. Taps and roses, taps and roses, taps and roses. Yeah, yeah man. So taps. can't speak about that, that off here. That need to be the song. Taps and roses. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, my people, we're gonna take a short, you know, commercial break. Yeah, sure. And big up the sponsors as well. Dream Experience London for all your events and party deals. Entity. And big up Entity. All right, big up Production Carib Culture. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. That's share it. the podcast. Far and wide, out of many, there's only one out of many 876 podcasts. That is right. it.